everybody! Today ended up being a day off, but since I missed yesterday's stream, I wanted to make sure there was a stream today, and there are stories to cover. So, it's, um, it's, it's day off, Grace. So, I, I hope you, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. What noise? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, so anyway, uh, today we have a, a good stream to go with. We've got three really good stories. And then, of course, uh, at, the, at the end of the stream, as always, you can ask me uh, anything that you would like for the final 10 minutes. Uh, hi, Tyler. Hi, day off, Grace. That's funny. Uh, so yes, uh, thank you. Hey, Lewis. thanks for joining. Uh, whenever anybody joins during a stream, I always um, give them a shout out. Uh, so anyway... Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, let's do a couple of shout outs before we get started while we wait for everybody to join in. My light is at my other setup, so this is real old school today. Super old school. Mr. Wazup19, Wazup. That's great. Let's see here. Jason is in San Francisco making a green smoothie. Good for you. I'm doing massive amounts of laundry. Let's see here. Drebrano is in Toronto. Let's see here. I wish I was having a Ferris Bueller day off kind of adventure there. Lloyd, who's spamming, says sitting out on my balcony enjoying a drink and the fabulous weather here in Virginia. Ooh, did the storm just go by? It's going to come. The big storm is going to hit here tomorrow. Vocatolin is toasting an English muffin in Corona, California. That's what you said, right? Yep. I like English muffins. Hey, Perry Stark. Thanks for joining. That's a nice photo of yourself. Uh, just Lewis. I am good. It's not a, it's not a bad day off. It's just, you know, I actually ended up working all day yesterday. I did not expect that. And so I needed to get some stuff done today. Alex says at rehearsal for Wicked Musical US Tour. Congratulations. I'm very happy for you that you're in that production. Nick says, I'm in my car, I'm on my way to work in New Zealand, would rather be in bed. The three beds, you really are feeling it. Hey, Gabriel Ortiz. Daniel McConkie says, hello from San Diego. Hello. Let's see here. Steven Everson is blowing up his wife's tire it's with a weird spelling. I hope I didn't just read out something inappropriate, but if you're doing the actual tire, that's very nice of you. Sharon says, you hope my cat is feeling better? I don't have a cat. But I appreciate the sentiment. Hey, Jordan Neal, thanks for joining. Kirby, who I had a very spirited discussion with today on Twitter, is in Minnesota. Let's see here. See, I get to know you guys if you're a member, and I, I recognize you on other platforms if you have the same name. Anthony is staying up late in Duran. Oh, I don't even know where he is. Where is Duran? That's great. I stay up way late, too late, late all the time. I am I am really bad at it. Hey, Matthew E. with the Spider-Man logo. It's perfect for today. Christiana says, hi, Grace. From work in New Jersey. The day is flying by. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it, right? I can't believe it's already 410. I finished the first season already of Dead to Me. That's a darn good show. I'm so happy I discovered it, although I'm, I can't handle binge watching. If there's another episode available, I want to watch it, and it's very bad for me. Oh, does Alexander have a cat? That's what you guys are talking about? Alexander, I'm sorry to hear something bad about your cat. Hail Hydra is cooking in Rhode Island. That's a very Hail Hydra activity. Hey, Sarah Densmore, thanks for joining. Carlos is watching from work in Miami. In Dallas, just to finish the discovery of witches. Hmm, interesting. FC, any news on Hill House Season 2? I do actually have news. I just saw this. It's not a scoop or anything. Uh, but I saw that um, uh, they said that the show is on track. It finished filming before coronavirus, and they expect it to come out around Halloween. And I'm super excited for it, because it, I didn't like Dr. Sleep, but I sure liked Hill House. All right, so let's get to today's stories. Uh, and then, of course, at the end of the stream, you may ask me anything that you would like. A Platinum Diva, if you use too many emojis, it takes it out. But um, I see you're still in Las Vegas, and it is quite hot there. It's 
pretty hot here, I think. At least my phone tells me it's hot, you know. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you again for joining me. I really appreciate it. Let's get started. Uh, we're definitely doing the boops because we've got the old uh, setup here. So hold on. Here it is. One second. All right. Boop. All right. Story number one. Hey, Jordan. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you were able to make it today. All right. So The Rock... It is a vintage boop, Dallas. That's funny. So The Rock, Danny Garcia, and Redbird Capital, which is apparently in the sports space, bought the XFL woo, today for $15 million. They put him at the top of trending for a while there. It was a big deal. Everybody was very excited about it. And based on Danny Garcia's tweets, it seems they all put in $5 million apiece. I have to say, if you can buy a sports team for 15 I mean, not only a, not a sports team, a sports league for just $15 million. Boy, is that on sale. What a, what a dirt cheap acquisition. And not only that, so anyway, so what is the XFL? So it was started by Vince McMahon, who of course is the head of the WWE, and he was like, I'm gonna do extreme football. That's why it's XFL, as Josh Loves Movies just said. It's basically silly NFL, right? So it has like, I think from what I could tell, trying to put my notes together for this, for this stream, was that it's like the NFL, but with easier athletic requirements. So it's more like uh, the NFL, if like a regular person could play it. And I guess they'll have more hijinks and stuff like that. Hey, Rodolfo, you bring up Henry Cavill. I wouldn't be surprised if they make Henry Cavill run out there and be like, hey, everybody, because of course he's uh, repped by Danny Garcia. So anyway, they launched this thing in 2020, I mean in 2000, the year 2000, and it was a colossal failure. They had one season, and then they had to go into hiatus, and they were supposed to bring it back this year, but then coronavirus hit. So the company, which Vince McMahon has that owns the, the XFL, had to file bankruptcy. So Vince McMahon himself didn't have to file bankruptcy, but the company that he had, like the company that he put this under did. So he's liquidating. And they were going to have um, uh, an auction for who would buy the XFL. And The Rock, Danny Garcia, and Redbird Capital were able to swoop in and buy the XFL before it even went to auction for $15 million, which means that they thought that that was ridiculously high for the XFL and they would never get it. <laughs> that no, they, no one else would ever auction that amount of money. Because if you thought it was too low, you'd be like, we're going to auction. You can just try to negotiate as best you can. So that's hilarious to me. I don't know what he's going to do with this. Soccer hasn't even caught on in the United States. We're not really looking, I think, for any new sports leagues, uh, especially one that is basically a variation on one that's already here and very popular. And also, I just don't know. I mean, it's going to be, to me, like probably one of those uh, shows. He also is very involved in those. But you know, like they have those extreme athletic competitions like American Ninja Warrior. It's going to be like an Amer American Ninja Warrior, basically. Dancing Dog 60 says it's now an NFL tryout league. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. But it's a, it's a pretty big deal. Danny Garcia is the first woman to ever own a league. That's pretty exciting. We'll get to her in a moment. I felt pretty good, for, nice for her. But I just don't know why The Rock would make this investment. I think that, you know, he's really, really overextended as it is. Uh, I love The Rock. I'm a big Rock fan. But a little of The Rock goes a long way, especially because like most movie stars, he doesn't have any range. There's nothing wrong with them having any range. In fact, most of the people who are leading actors have zero range. And people love them for it. They're like McDonald's food. You always know what you're going to get. But people don't want to eat the same thing every week. So you got to be careful about how you, how you serve it. But I'm not quite sure why he would buy this. He also doesn't have any sons. He has all daughters. And in fact, his oldest daughter just is trying to get into the WWE. So I'm not quite sure why they, he would want this. Unless if, if Henry Cavill can't be uh, Superman, perhaps he'll become an XFL player. But I did think that Danny Garcia was pretty interesting today because she tweeted out, see, I'm not the only one who does it. Sometimes you got to toot your own horn to make sure you get, you know, you know, you call, call attention to something. And so she, she did the same. I've done this a little bit lately because I've just been so frustrated. So Danny Garcia was equally frustrated today. And she said, I can't believe that I'm an equal owner and investor in the XFL 
And I didn't get into the headline of this article. She retweeted an article and she was like, what the heck, man? How is it just say The Rock buys the XFL? Uh, I'm just, so I can imagine that was very, very annoying for her. Now, coming from the other side of it, as someone who writes headlines for my own work, I know a little bit about how metadata works. You don't have a lot of space sometimes. And also, I, for instance, even though I included her photo in my live stream today, I was going to write her name in the title, but I was like, that's going to separate The Rock and XFL by too many letters. And it's going to hurt when people look at it visually and in the metadata. So I was like, I need The Rock to go next to, X, next to XFL. So it's just the harsh reality of the biz. What Danny Garcia needs to do is to make her name more clickable. Now, for instance, if you follow my channel, you know who Danny Garcia is, and her name is clickable, because we've been talking about her extensively and her negotiations for Henry Cavill to return to Superman, how they're going. So I think that Danny Garcia needs to raise her profile, and she's doing it by being a co-owner of this league. So she might have been left out of the headline today, but I think there's a near future, if she keeps going this way, that she won't be left out of the headline. So I'm glad she's aware of it. I'm glad she said something about it. I don't think I would necessarily fault the publication for doing it, but I'm glad that she called them. I don't want to say she called them out. I think she more just like talked about society, because I don't think they did it to be mean, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm glad she said it. I mean, she has to keep doing power moves like that. And eventually people will know her name and they won't leave her out of the articles. So that's a little bit of like how you, how you work the PR business. And I'm very happy for her. I, you know, the fact that she's been able to go into business with her ex-husband, God bless her. She's a saint. That's amazing. I guess they just kind of felt, I mean, that's, I've always felt that way. I think that it would be easier to break up with somebody if they didn't cheat on you. If you were just like, you know what, it's not working anymore. Let's just break up. And then you'd be like, okay. And then you go on your separate ways. As long as no one offends anybody. So I'm happy that they have a nice relationship. Uh, her brother is also involved in their business. And so I'm glad that it's worked out so well for them. It's certainly better off for the children. I think that Will Smith has, although the Smith family is apparently very open in many ways, but, you know, they've stayed very close with, you know, I don't think you want to vilify anybody in the family unless they do something that's villain worthy. Oh, uh, let's see here. That's right, Yap Dem. If only relationships were so easy. They make it look so easy. I mean, The Rock and Danny Garcia. By the way, Danny Garcia is extremely fit. She looks amazing. She was like, really like the female rock. It's very impressive. So I hope we're going to, I'm going to do my best to cover her. And I think that we should really pay attention. And, you know, I feel bad I had to leave her name out of the headline for this, but I'm just telling you what the reality of it is. But I did put her picture in there. That's what I did for Danny Garcia. I made sure I put her picture in there. I thought that was very important. All right. So how do you guys feel about the XFL? Does anybody here watch the XFL? <laughs> That's right, Aaliyah. Lisa Bonet, uh, Lenny Kravitz, and Jason Momoa are all very good friends. That's lovely as well, I think. Nobody watches it. <laughs> That's right, Dallas. There are a lot of crickets in here. Yeah, I never heard of the XFL. I think I vaguely heard of the XFL, and I never thought it was a particularly good idea. You know what? To be fair, let's see what The Rock does with it. Maybe he has, maybe he and Dan, I'm sorry, The Rock and Danny Garcia, maybe they have a really cool idea how to make it more WWE-like, and maybe people will be more into it. So, but I don't know where they could air it. If it could be like come like a dodgeball league or something. I think it shouldn't be football, quite frankly, or just football. Hey, Cole, new member. I don't think it should be just football. Because why wouldn't you just, that's true, Dancing Dog 60. This isn't a sports show, so a lot of you aren't into sports. Um, myself included. I really only watch the Super Bowl, and I don't watch that anymore because, uh, I cover it for the trailers. Platinum Diva, I do think 15 million, now that we talk about it, 15 million does seem a bit high. <laughs> That's why they got it. That's why the bankruptcy court was like sold and they didn't even bother to go to, uh, to uh, the, the auction. All right, so that's the first story of the day. Now let's talk about the second story, which I think mo interests most of you. Hold on, I gotta give us another boop. All right, so 
The Avengers game is coming out September 4th, and no one has talked about it as much as they have today. So at the very least, the Sony PlayStation exclusive has got that going for it, because all I've ever seen up until now is people complain about this game. I've never seen anyone be like, oh boy, I can't wait for the Avengers video game to come out. It's right around the corner. Again, it comes out September 4th. I'm going to cover the cutscenes as I usually do for video games that have a movie component. Uh, so there were two controversies that I saw today about PlayStation. So first, people are upset that the old controller wouldn't work with the new game. Doesn't the new game come with controllers? I've never heard of anybody saying, oh, I'm going to use my old controllers, but the new console. I would, and also, they wouldn't even match. Why would you not want to have the whole new set? That seems crazy to me. But apparently, people were quite upset about this announcement this morning. But then, they didn't know how good they had it, because just an, a few hours later, they were living in an even harsher world, where it was announced that Spider-Man, in addition to Hawkeye, would also be a DLC for the game. However, unlike Hawkeye, which is going to be available for all consoles, Spider-Man is exclusive only to the, P the PlayStation uh, game. I guess you guys are saying it comes with the controller, but I guess maybe only one? Maybe you need multiples? I, well, maybe that's why. You're like, I want to come to someone's house, and I don't want to have to buy a new controller. Well, you're going to have to. So anyway, uh, yeah. Sp hey, hey, Shan uh, Sridhar, thanks for joining. So any, oh, a DLC... Uh, it, uh, um, I forget what it stands for. DLC basically is, uh, and I cover Mortal Kombat all the time and Injustice. You know how there's a new character that's added on after the game launches and you can down, oh, downloadable content. That's what it stands for. Ha, I got my video game credibility. I'm so proud of myself. Yes, Manny, Manny just said it, but thankfully I said it beforehand. So I get the points for remembering on my own. I'm so proud of myself. So yeah, it's downloadable content. And it's a way to get people, usually you have to sometimes pay for it, or sometimes you can buy, I know with NetherRealm games, you can buy the premium version of the game, which includes all the DLC content down the road. But Spider-Man, by the way, DLC is free. It's free, but you just have to have a PlayStation. But a lot of people were very upset about this. Now, at first, I didn't understand why people were upset about it, because I was like, of course it's exclusive to PlayStation because Sony owns the rights to the character. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But let's talk about the stuff we haven't talked about on Twitter in case any of you were privy to that conversation already today. So one of you got a really good comeback and you said, and this was great, somebody said, hey, listen, oh, that's very sweet of you to say, Perry. So somebody said, I paid the same amount for this game as the people who were buying it for PlayStation 5. Yet because I have an Xbox or a PC version of it, I get one less character so I'm not getting as, as good a, a number, I'm, I'm not as getting a good a version of the game for the same price. And I was like, there it is in a nutshell. That's pretty darn bad. I think that it would be better if they had an exclusive character to each console. You get a character, you get a character, you get a character. I think that would have been more fair. When you, when you put it like that person did, it is massively unfair. Uh, they should, the, it should... Spider-Man could be a DLC that's exclusive to PlayStation, but you should have to pay for it. It shouldn't be a free DLC. I think that's the problem. But Sony's like, we already making you pay for a PS5. We're not going to make you pay for an additional character. We got enough stuff for you to have to pay for. So I think that's where Sony's coming from. But I will tell you that this is even further proof that Sony has that character in a chokehold. Because why would they allow this exclusive? And why is it, oh, if Sony didn't have exclusive rights to Spider-Man, why would they always pick Spider-Man? You know, they're just really big Spider-Man fans over there. They would pick another character. They'd pick Scarlet Witch, Logan. They'd be like, I mean, yeah, everybody would be like, forget Spider-Man, where's Scarlet? People who didn't even play the game would be like, let's go buy whatever platform she's on and let's go get it. But I think that you're going to see more and more exclusives as, as, as the game industry becomes more and more competitive and more and more lucrative. Because people are... Why else would, what's the incentive to buy these different station, uh, consoles if you don't have these kinds of incentives? Uh, that's why you see games that are exclusive. I mean, heck, the Spider-Man games and the upcoming Miles Morales games are PlayStation exclusives. And for instance, as we were talking a little bit on Twitter earlier today, the whole reason that Microsoft is even thinking of buying Warner Brothers games, although that's been so quiet for now, I don't know if that deal will actually happen. But the reason that was even a conversation is because they want those games to be Xbox exclusives. So I think you're just going to see more and more of it 
Uh, Mika, Universal doesn't own the Hulk. They own the rights to a standalone Hulk movie. If you were to make a movie that was about the Hulk and he was the lead character, Universal would have to be able to distribute it. That's the problem there. It's a different deal, which we'll talk about in a moment. But yeah, you see those streaming services, you know, where do the Sony and Marvel shows go? They go to Disney+. Plus. You still see a little bit of confusion, a little bit, especially in places like Disney that owns too many streaming services. So they're like, oh, what? this one's on Hulu. And you're like, what are you doing? So there's stuff like that. But for the most part, you're going to see more and more divisions like this. You're going to see this is only available here because it's the proliferation. There are so many game consoles. There are so many streaming services. How are you going to make sure somebody gets yours? By offering the better exclusives. And it's just the world that we live in right now. And there's just nothing that you're going to be able to do about it, unfortunately. Now, Sarah Densmore says, I hate that Hulu is not in Canada. Yeah, that seems ridiculous. On a side note. You know, the saying, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. I'm very sad that only one country is getting SpongeBob the movie, and that's Canada. Now, some people wrote back and they said, well, how do you like it? Because we have to deal with this crap all the time in our country. And I was like, look, I don't want, and I don't want, I think I see, this in a, I see this mentality in a lot of areas, including civil rights and personal rights. Just because I don't think that it's like, hey, you were mean to us. Now it's our turn to be mean to you. I don't think that's a good plan. And it's also very hard to get anyone to sign up for that plan because it involves someone being mean to them, which is obvious. So I think I want everyone to have everything. I'm in favor of day and date global releases for all content. I don't think anyone should have to wait. Everybody's on the internet. We all talk about it at the same time. I think it's stupid for there to be staggered release dates on anything. I think everything should be global and it doesn't make any sense to me and I'm, I'm not a fan of it. All right. So anyway, back to the Sony and Spider-Man deal. So when I was working at Marvel, I wanted to do something I think was Spider-Man on, a, on a, one of the, I hosted their uh, a YouTube show for them. And I was told, you can't do anything with Spider-Man because Sony owns the partial rights to not just the, mo you know, they don't just do the movies, but they own part of the character. Uh, I mean, maybe they shouldn't have said that to me, but they did, so I can tell it to you. So, and I was, because at the time I was like, is that true? Really? And I had the same reaction that you guys do. And the person who told me was like, yeah, we can't even do a major comic book story without running it by Sony. Because, of course, it could damage the character, which they have partial ownership for. Now, everybody loves to point, now, at the time, by the way, by the time, at the time that this deal was made, Marvel was in a really bad situation. Like, go out of business or be bought by a company that was not Disney. So it was a very bad situation. That's why you had the X-Men, that's why you had the X-Men and a Marvel Knights Fox deal. But that was only for film and TV rights. But the Sony deal was incredibly lucrative. And Sony said, we want part of the character too. So Marvel said, okay. And they sold it to them. That's why they've, they're never going to get, why do you think that they have such big fights with uh, Sony? Like recently when Sony was like, we're going to pull it out of the MCU. I mean, how could Sony do that? You know, like, why does, you have to just think about it. Why does Sony have so much pull on the Spider-Man character if they didn't have it in a complete legal chokehold? Now, sure, over the years, they've sold back bits and pieces to, to Disney Marvel for an incredible amount of money. Uh, they Like the merchandising rights. Because Sony doesn't really make merchandise. So they're like, we don't need it. We, it's fine. Um, but Disney, Disney, of course, has a huge merchandise empire. Uh, but, you know, still, it's really intertwined there. And so, and also, if it was only always just a movies and TV deal, how did they have the merch rights to sell back to Disney Marvel in the first place? I mean, just think about it. So, it's really a legal mumbo-jumbo mess, but it's clearly a mess, or you can be sure that Disney Marvel would separate themselves from the mess. They don't want to be stuck in there. They don't want to have to ask Amy Pascal and Tom Rothman, who now runs Sony Pictures, every time they want to do something with Spider-Man, but they do. Do you think they like making all, like Venom, I like Venom, but you know, do you think they like when Amy Pascal's like, I'm going to make a Silver Sable movie. Uh, I'm going to, you know, like all these crazy things. And everyone's like, what? I mean, the, the Spider-Verse movies are fantastic. But also, if Disney had any rights to any of the other Spider-Man characters, why don't they ever do anything with them? Why doesn't Disney ever do anything about any Spider-Man uh, adjacent characters, right? Why aren't they like, oh, let's do something with, uh, why don't they do anything with Miles Morales, right? Why don't they do anything with any of the villains? It's because Sony has a lock on that stuff. And they're like, they're forever interwoven. Uh, you know, basically Spider-Man is stuck in Sony's web. I'm glad everyone's enjoying my energy today. 
you know, it's a, it's a casual day, so I, maybe I get a little bit more animated. But that's just the way it is. And that's just business. You know, they were. It's, you have to look at it this way. The Sony Spider-Man deal saved Marvel and allowed it to become a great company that was in a position for Disney to buy it, and now it's at the top of the world. And unfortunately, they just lost Spider-Man. It's something that's easy to hack off. And also, Sony, I think we have to also be very happy about, is willing to play. They're willing to play ball. And that's why um, uh, Dark Savior says, why do they own Spider-Woman? Anything that's involved with Spider-Man is Sony's. And if you don't believe me, just look at the evidence. That, and also, if Sony didn't have exclusivity to that, some people are like, well, so other people could make a television show about Spider-Man. It's only, only the movie rights or something. I saw somebody write that back to me. Well, then why on, why on God's green earth wouldn't Disney Marvel make their own Spider-Man TV show? If you really think that Disney has the rights to make a Spider-Man television show and isn't making one to put on Disney Plus, that's insane. Or why haven't they sold it to, or given the rights to some other company to make it? I mean, it just makes zero sense. And as I told you, when they had a, a problem with the, the MCU deal, I told you, I said, that deal will be signed. They will make, they will fix it. And you know why they're going to fix it? Because they have built a Spider-Man ride smack in their new Avengers theme park. It's just the way it is. So, yeah. Very interesting. Thank you, LP. A lot of people didn't believe it. I was surprised at how many people tweeted me back facts today. They were like, oh, well, this is what I heard. And I'm like, what did you hear? And you have no evidence of that. Twitter is a, Twitter's a rough place. But I will never leave Twitter. I've told people that you shouldn't be, allow yourself to be chased off a platform. And so it's a wild, wild west. It's a real rodeo out there. But we're just going to have fun. I like Twitter. It's fun. It is fun. Yes, that's right, Chico. It's ranting grace today. All right. I'm glad. Hey, Aaron. I'm glad everybody joined it. Um, George Alexander says, such a shame. Orlando will never get a Spider-Man in Disney World. Yeah, that's another bad deal. So also, when they were having a problem over at Marvel, uh, Universal said, would you like some money? We'd like to purchase the rights to do uh, Marvel rides here in Orlando. And Marvel's, hey, hey, Mav Brick Z. And so Marvel's like, yes, we need more money. Here, here you go. You can make the, and there, and the Spider-Man ride, by the way, was the best ride there too. I used to, I haven't gone there in a while, but I used to love going there. They had comic books on sale, which was really, which was really cool. They were mostly trades, but I loved it. I got a cool Wolverine shirt there that I don't have anymore, but I really liked it. But I had a cool Wolverine shirt on there with the Joseph Madiera artwork on it. It was great. Uh, and that Spider-Man ride, I'll never forget it. I went on that Spider-Man ride, and not, no one else in my family likes comic books. My dad likes Silver Age comics, and I don't like Silver Age comics, so we got nothing to talk about. So we went on that Spider-Man ride. It was like, you know, the 3D ride that they have there. And it was riding us all around, and it had all this great stuff. And in the middle of the ride, Electro jumps on the front of it and electrifies the car. And one of my family members turned to me and said, this is amazing. And it made me so happy that they were enjoying something that had to do with comic books and expressed enthusiasm for it, even though usually they couldn't care less. Oh, it made me so happy. It was great. We even went on, um, I don't drink, Lisa, so this is the closest I get. But even we went on uh, Dr. Doom's free fall. And I, every time we went on a ride, I'd have to explain to my family members who the character was. It was really funny. Uh, I will always remember Dr. Doom's free fall because they had, you had to take your shoes off if you had um, flip-flops on because they'd fly off into the air and hit somebody. So my dad had tie-on shoes on, and he just heard take your shoes off, and he was like, we have to take our shoes off. And we were like, not if you have laces. What kind of ride do you think this is that it's going to pop off your tied-on shoes? So I'll always think about that whenever I think of uh, Dr. Doom's free fall. Uh, but yeah, it is annoying that they can... And so Disney... I guess it's only Marvel proper characters because, of course, they're doing a Guardians of the Galaxy ride at Epcot. But they can't do any of their Marvel main characters at Disney World because of that stupid deal at Universal. I still feel to this day that I would go over to Universal with an open checkbook and I would say, how much to get these rights for these characters back? Because and you can even keep this land. You don't even have to knock it down. You can keep this ride. But how much? And I guarantee you that there's no number that Universal can come up with that would not be eclipsed by what Disney would eventually make off of having an Avengers campus in Orlando. So I, Avengers campus was supposed to open this coming summer, but who the heck, or actually this summer, right? But who the heck knows now with the stupid coronavirus? 
Uh, all right. So anyway, uh, anyone, does anyone have any specific questions about this topic? That's right, Ned. I'd spend a lot of money as a Hollywood pr uh, producer, but I'd get stuff done. I mean, if you have the deep pockets of Disney. You're right, Huntley. It was supposed to open in July. I was like, should I fly out there for that so I can cover it? Who knows when the heck it's ever going to happen now. Steven says, what else can we get Grace to rant about? That's pretty funny. Mika, the She-Hulk rights are obviously Disney because they're doing a Disney Plus show. I'm glad everyone's enjoying Ranting Grace. I get very passionate about stuff. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Survi oh, Red says, do you think the game, uh, he will be as good as Insomniac, Spidey, or Injustice? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Those are both incredibly well done. Uh, I think he should be as good as everybody else. Uh, this game looks weird to me. I'll tell you right now, it's so funny how slightly off model all the Avengers are. They're clearly basing it on the movies, but they didn't sign rights to the likenesses of the actors, so they have to do, like, knockoff versions of the actors. They're like, oh, you can tell this is Bruce Banner because he's wearing the same purple shirt from the first Avengers movie. And I'm like, come on. All right. Can I imagine an X-Men ride? I can, although I never went on that Storm ride because it always seemed lame to me. And I like Storm a lot. Let's see here. Joseph says, how much for Universal to sell the Hulk rights? It must be a lot because, well, I don't know. Disney can sometimes be extraordinarily cheap. Did you see one of their log flumes sunk yesterday? Man, I was like, that's so bad. A Disney World vacation is not cheap. So that stuff should be running at peak performance. I'd be so upset if I went to Disney World for the amount of money it costs and I, I was on a boat that sank. So um, anyway, I think that Disney feels they can get around it and they don't need to make a Hulk movie. And they're like, we don't need to. We make a Hulk TV show. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, Platinum Diva. If Storm isn't in Black Panther 2, I hope Ryan Coogler has a good substitute. He is Bob Chipek. Joseph says, do you feel that Sony sometimes doesn't treat Spider-Man right? Amazing Spider-Man 2, for example. I don't think so. I think you have to understand that sometimes TV executives just, and movie executives just don't know what they're doing. I mean, I feel that they felt that Sp Amazing Spider-Man 2 was like a great movie. I also feel this happens a lot. I feel a lot of times people who make these movies or oversee them don't watch them themselves. So they can't tell a good one from a bad one. So they're like, I don't know. It checks all the boxes. I've got Jamie Foxx in it, who's an Oscar winner playing a comic book villain. He's all electric. Uh, he's excited about what he's doing. People like Electro. I think, it, I think the kids are going to love it. And then everyone was like, ew. I've often felt they should have little councils of comic book fans that they run this stuff by uh, and just have them sign NDAs. Uh, and if you break the NDA, you're kicked out of the group. So that would be an incentive not to do it. And then they could be like, do you like this? And then the person would say, no. And then they would save themselves lots of money. Let's see here. Uh, thank you, Dallas. Yeah, Megan, Andrew Garfield was a great Peter Parker. Thank you, Daniel. Nathan says, why are the Spider-Man rights stuff so hush-hush? I think because it's an embarrassing deal, and I think fans wouldn't like it, you know? And so I think they're like, let's just not, let's just, you know, nobody needs to know about it. And also, I think Sony's not, someone said to me, and they, oh, this is a funny tweet, someone was like, so if Sony could approve storylines, you really think they would have approved one, uh, one More Day, you know, where uh, they make a deal with the devil and it gets rid of their marriage. I'm sure, look, it's not like a Marvel executive can't sell a bad idea to Sony. Because you think the people who have to approve it over at Sony read any of the Marvel comics? So someone comes up to them and goes, this is great. We're going to get rid of the marriage for Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson because nobody likes it when characters are married, which is true, by the way. It's very hard to have a, a healthy couple in entertainment. So 
they and the Sony executive goes, you know, that's right. Nobody wants these couples to be together. They're like, Peter Parker can date around, and so can Mary Jane Watson. And so I'm sure the Sony executive was like, great idea. And so they say, okay. So I think that's how it goes. All right, so let's go to the next story of the day. And then don't worry, you can ask me anything you want at the end of the stream. This is a very long stream today. All right, I'm glad you guys are having a good time. All right, hold on. Boop, final boop of the day. I couldn't believe this headline when I saw it. I was like, man, what's going to fill the third spot? I'll tell you how I put these streams together. I can only put two, sometimes I can squeeze in three, but I can really only put two stories in the poster frame and the metadata. So I don't want to waste a good story. So for the third story, I usually put something that's like interesting, but more industry, a little bit more obscure, you know, that's not going to drive a lot of traffic. So I was like, ah, oh, what's it going to be? And so I logged on to the Hollywood Reporter and I was like, there it is. Leonardo DiCaprio does an Apple TV deal. I'm like, what? Why would he do that? I, I'm sh I'll tell you why he did it. Tons of money. All right, so Apple, of course, has so much money, so much money. They have so much money over there. And they're trying to buy themselves. Although Microsoft tried to buy, I read that uh, Ninja article in the Hollywood Reporter over the weekend. Ninja wants to be a movie star. Never tell anybody you want to be a movie star. Go become a movie star and then be like, surprise. I would never tell anybody you want to be a movie star. That's a really good way not to be a movie star. So anyway, Ninja's like, uh, why did, oh yeah, he's like, I'm going to be a movie star. And they're like, why are you not streaming right now, Ninja? And he goes, well, I got to tell you, Mixer, Microsoft, paid me like 20 to $30 million, wow, to be exclusive to their streaming service for video games. But then they couldn't make it go. So I'm free. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He got paid so much money to do nothing. That's incredible. So that's really amazing to me. But I'm saying Microsoft spent a ton of money, over $30 million to do Mixer, and the thing fell through. So you can't always buy yourself to, into, a, into a space. But Apple's going to try. They're like, hey, everybody comes here to buy and rent the content. Maybe we should have some of our own content out there. But here's my problem with how Apple TV is set up. It's not its own service. You can't like go into an Apple TV uh, section and see the rankings and stuff like that. They mix it all in with the, the purchases and the rentals, but um, you can't see how it does because it's not, it's, it's not an a la, carte, a la carte purchase. So it just disappears into the space. It's nuts. Like they keep saying, hey, everybody, watch Tom Hanks' Greyhound. And you're like, is anyone watching Tom Hanks' Greyhound? Because you can't tell on the service if they're watching it. I mean, even Netflix put in a ranking system because that's how important it is. So nobody can tell if everybody's watching Greyhound. Certainly nobody's talking about it. So there's like no qualifier for success. And there's no, they don't release any numbers. They don't release any numbers in terms of viewership. They don't release any numbers in terms of revenue. Because there is no revenue because it's, it's part of a subscription service. They don't see how many, they don't even talk about how many subscriptions it might have sold. It's, it's a crazy situation. So, but anyway, Apple's like continuing to spend tons of money. Uh, hey, Ari, uh, it's continuing to spend tons of money on big name talent. And they're like, oh, we have a whole constellation of stars here that we hid in, the clo hid in a closet. But anyway, now they've added Leonardo DiCaprio to the mix. The only other really big star they have is Idris Elba. Uh, but Idris Elba, I'm happy for him to get that deal. These are first look deals. Again, what a first look deal means is that any movie or TV idea, you have to go to Apple TV first and say, do you want this? And if they say yes, you have to make it with them. But if they say, yeah, that's not for us, you can shop it around to another company, another distributor or platform. So anyway, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, it's crazy. So Leonardo DiCaprio has a production company called Apian Way. He's a pretty good producer. He mostly produces stuff for himself. He also did that in Orphan. It's like, and that's like the one weird thing on his resume. Also, he did the Disney Plus The Right Stuff series, which is coming there uh, from National Geographic uh, later this year. So anyway, uh, Apian Way, he's not, his, he's not the same producer as Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt is a prolific producer of content that he is not in. Uh, hey, Joey got, Joey got jokes. That's great. Same as Will Ferrell and Adam McKay. I was watching Dead to Me. Who, produ who exec produces that show? Adam McKay and Will Ferrell. I was like, that's nuts. I love it. So Leonardo DiCaprio is not at that level yet. Maybe with this Apple TV deal, he'll get there. He's already doing two things with them. He's doing Killers of the Flower Moon, which is another Scorsese movie, which is too expensive for anyone else. Yet again, Scorsese wants to spend ridiculous amounts of money on a project that people feel there's no way they could ever get their money back. 
Netflix. Although Irishman is one of the most watched movies of all time on the on the service, so I guess that kind of worked out for that in that way. So he's doing that movie already with Apple TV. But again, is anyone going to watch it? I mean, Tom, I think DiCaprio and Scorsese is a pretty compelling combination. I think at least maybe people will talk about that. I don't think anybody talked about the Tom Hanks Greyhound movie. It just didn't have it. It was really good, but it just didn't have, an, I think, a conversation. It didn't have anything that you needed to talk about. You know, it was just like, yeah, it was great. And then you went on with your life. I not like how you continued to think about it. It was just really good. Uh, so anyway, um, Shining Girls is also a series that he's producing with Elizabeth Moss. Uh, so he's working with a Scientologist. So yeah, but that's the other thing that he's doing for Apple TV right now. And apparently, other things, if they say yes. Did anyone here watch Greyhound? Say if you watched it and what you thought of it. So far, I have two people who enjoyed it. I like Elizabeth Moss too, Buscemi boy, and I know how to say your name. Uh, I just sometimes, whenever I'm reminded, whenever I remember the Tom Cruise is Scientologist or Elizabeth Moss, I'm like, damn it. See, no, none of you watched it. I watched The Banker, Mika. That was a great movie. But I get this stuff for, I actually have, they, I told you, they replaced my phone and I got free Apple TV for a year, even though I didn't actually buy a new Apple product. I was like, this is a happy, I didn't like, I didn't be like, are you sure? I was like, yes, please. But I get it a screener anyway. TJ Williams says, I have it, but I don't watch any of their shows. So some of, very few of you watched it, but you did enjoy it for the most part if, if you did. Defending Jacob is a great show. Nobody talked about that either. Didn't get any Emmy nominations because it's on Apple TV. You might as well just chuck your content into a black hole, which is a real shame because that's good stuff. All right, so those are the three stories of the day. Hold on. Ah, darn it. Okay. It's 4.48, and you can ask me anything you'd like. We'll just go till 5 o'clock. I'm having a good time talking to you. You're having a good time talking to me. We'll just go till 5. I forget, Platinum Diva, that most people don't have an Apple phone. or not Because I'm just all Apple products, and so I forget that it's actually the minority of people who have Apple content, which is really weird. Kyle, there's Wonder Woman 1984. I mean, I think they're holding all news until DC fandom, which is going to be an insane 24 hours. I wish it were a whole weekend of content. Elliot Buck says, Joey King is joining Brad Pitt's Action Train movie. That's great, but they better add a person of color pretty soon or he's going to get hit with whitewashing uh, complaints and it's not going to be able to go away. If anything after that will seem like an apology. So he better cast someone. I mean, it's based on a, like a Japanese novel. So he better get somebody in there of color real fast. Like today. Stardust 490 says, why is Rear Window your favorite movie? It's not my favorite movie. It's one of three favorites. Uh, Joker, which replaced The Dark Knight. Uh, Rear Window and uh, Saving Mr. Banks are my three favorite movies. Uh, I like Rear Window so much because it's not only so beautifully made, I just love Technicolor and I love Alfred Hitchcock, but I absolutely adore uh, how the movie operates on different levels. It's not only a thriller, but it also talks about relationships. And you'll notice that every single person in the apartments is in a different type of relationship. And of course, Jimmy Stewart's having a very spirited conversation with Grace Kelly about their relationship. So it's really, really interesting. And also, back in the day, at Universal Studios Orlando, they used to have a model of the way it looked because they shot it and that they actually built the apartment building across the way at a smaller scale so they could shoot it from the window. Uh, you know, today they would have all done it CGI. But back then, they had to shoot it from across the soundstage into a little tiny apartment building, and it's just fantastic. James, that Ryan Reynolds story is not at all true. It's as true as Ben Affleck coming back for Batfleck anytime soon. Uh, Ivan, that Kate Bishop concept art was released beforehand, but um, or variations of it. I mean, it's hard to react to it because it looks like it's just an illustration from the comics. It's so on. It's so on 
target as to the way the character is supposed to look that you're like, that's perfect. You know, it's not even like they made a little change for the movie or for the TV version. It's just, it is Kate Bishop. Let's see here. Brian, they haven't said anything about Storm's casting. Of course, it's the role that everyone wants and I don't blame them. To be Storm right in the MCU for Ryan Coogler? Although I have complete faith that Ryan Coogler will cast the right actress. Let's see here. Braden says, how can you get into DC Fandom? Well, they haven't really launched the website yet, but I'm sure there will be very clear instructions on how to get in there. The only question is, because it's free, will it crash? I'm guessing it will crash. Uh, Quinn, we don't know for sure if Storm is actually going to be in Black Panther 2, but everybody's really hoping for it, and I think at this point everybody would be incredibly disappointed if she was not. Sohn M says, Grace, do you think that Amber Heard will be present during fan events when Aquaman 2 comes out? Let's see what this first jur this first judge decides. I mean, it's been over a week and he still hasn't, it's almost a week and he still hasn't come back with a verdict on whether or not Johnny Depp is right or Amber Heard or the son, basically. Uh, I don't know what's taken him so long, but if, she, if, if Johnny Depp wins, it's going to be very bad for her. Her publicist should be very careful about putting her in fan events. Barbie says, well, they, well, Warner Brothers put Wonder Woman 1984 on HBO Max if they have to move again. I don't know. I think that that's, that's a special situation because they've had to move it so many times. But I think that it's going to be very difficult for them. I don't think that's, I, I think that I'd like to see that happen. But I think that the way things are going, I don't think it's going to happen. Ivan, I don't know if I'm going to watch, uh, oh no, who asked that? Magid, Magid Zangana said, Grace, are you going to watch Hellstrom on Hulu? Uh, I might check it out. The trailer was so uncomic booky, I didn't even bother to react to it because something else was happening. I think it came out right around the same time as the black suit clip. And I was like, what's more important? Uh, the black suit clip. So uh, let's just see what it, it looks like if it's at all comic booky. Dancing Dog 60 says, Jessica Roth is less expensive than Alison Brie for She-Hulk. I bet Alison Brie right now is dirt cheap. And I would also tell you that she would probably take a pay cut to be She-Hulk. Who wouldn't? I, I mean, she, you would get to be in the, in the movies. Uh, Jordan, Ritu Aria as Ms. Marvel is probably one of the most brilliant casting suggestions I've ever seen. I mean, unfortunately, she's supposed to be uh, Young Avengers age, so she, uh, Ritu Aria is too old for the role, but it's too bad they're doing that because she'd be absolutely perfect. She even has the haircut. Daniel says, Grace, if you could join any Lantern Corps, which one would you choose? Ooh. I don't know. The blue one's too zen for me. The yellow, they're, Sinestro, is, they're evil. I guess I'd have to go with the traditional Green Lantern, you know? I don't want to be the Star Sapphire. I don't want to be that team because it's all women. Uh, you know, I like, I like a mix. Um, yeah, I guess I'd have to go with the traditional. here. We have five minutes left. Red says, who should replace Patty Jenkins for a fourth Wonder Woman movie and what, and should that director be a woman? Well, 
I got to tell you, I don't know. That's so far away because they haven't even released the second one. She still has to make a third. Uh, as for whether or not the director should be a woman, I don't think necessarily. I don't think you should not have any women involved. I think if you have a male director, you should have at least one female writer working on it um, or a female producer. Someone has to be a woman in the, in the top leadership, which would be uh, the producer, the director, and the writer. Uh, and you can have more than one writer on a film, so it could be two. But you have to have a woman involved in some capacity. However, I've seen guys do great content uh, for women. Like, for instance, the showrunners on the new Harley Quinn series are two guys. And that's some of the best female representation I've ever seen. So I think that you could to totally have a male director on it. Uh, just make sure that he knows what he's doing. Maybe that's, the ch that's, that's what it is. Maybe you could have a male director, but a woman has to pick him. <laughs> that's what I would do. For dinner tonight, Antonio, I'm thinking fish sticks. And I have some cucumbers, some mini cucumbers. Youngie says, if I could play an X-Men, who would it be? Uh, I don't want to play that game, but I will tell you that I am a fan of telekinesis, so I would want to have Jean Grey's power set. Uh, I like her power set. I'm a little goofier than Jean Grey, so uh, I really like Rogue. So I like Rogue a lot. Um, but yeah, that's, those are my favorite characters. That's right, Joseph. I do have some tartar sauce as well. Although I have some fish sticks that are so good, they don't even really need tartar sauce. Kyle, I'm definitely going to review Lovecraft Country. It looks very good to me. It's a little early to ask for the screeners. I have, I have it in my calendar to ask for the screeners next week. Dancing Dog 60 says, who's more powerful, Jean Grey or Wanda? Technically Wanda, because she could make it that Jean Grey never existed, because she can alter reality. Although in the MCU, can she alter reality? I don't know. Oh, apparently she can in the, in the Disney Plus series. They've never really explored her powers at all in the movies. Taylor says, is there any way to know how successful Black is King was for Disney? There unfortunately is not, unless Disney releases some information. Uh, I did see that, for instance, they were sponsoring articles in some newspapers over the weekend, and I thought that was crazy that they pushed it so hard. For Black is King, how many of you got all the way through it? How much of Black is King did you watch? Do it like a percentage-wise, up to 100. And there ain't no shame in only watching some of it. Let's see if anyone will admit to it. Taylor watched it eight times. That's lovely. So far, mostly 100, oh, 50, 70, 10%. Oh, it's nice to see a lot of 100%s. 800%. That's funny, Taylor. That's true. Yeah, I think that it's, um, I think you could probably watch it in breaks. I told you I felt it was too long, but it was very, very good. People should watch it. Uh, LP says 25%. Yeah, I didn't particularly care for the music myself. Um, but I thought it was really a touching, beautiful project. Very cool. I thought she did great stuff. I was very impressed. I think Beyonce has a future behind the camera. Oh, it's five o'clock. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had a lovely time talking to you as always. I'll be back with my regular setup tomorrow. And don't forget tomorrow is Disney's earnings call. They'll release a lot of financial information in the morning and then they'll explain it at 4.30 PM. So I might end up making two videos. I'm also going to be reviewing, um, American Pickle tomorrow. Unfortunately, I was supposed to do it today, but I couldn't get to it. But I will review American Pickle tomorrow. So the, other, the embargo is lifted, so some reviews are out. Um, but I'll be, I'm excited to talk to you about it tomorrow. Uh, Jordan, I'm glad you became a member today, too. See you tomorrow, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, everybody.